Hey everybody, welcome to Campus Comics Cast, coming to you from Carbondale, Illinois, with special guests from the Campus Comics crew, and now, here's your host, the man with the previews in hand, Mike No. Hello again, and welcome to the December 2017 episode of Campus Comics Cast. We're coming to you from inside Campus Comics in the heart of Carbondale, Illinois, right on Main Street. I'm going to take you through the uh, December 2017 previews uh, for product shipping in February, for the most part. I'm sure specialty stuff will run later. And uh, the cutoff for this, just get that out of the way so I don't forget, is this December 29th is when I have to have my order in. So if there's anything you're interested in, just be sure and get a hold of me. By that time, we'll give information at the end of the podcast as far as uh, how to get a hold of us, you know, contact information. So, okay, let's start looking at the previews and joining me to help me out with that tonight are... Uh, Scott Reed. This is Dan. And Tyler Wright. Okay, does anybody have anything? We just want to go right to Dark Horse. Is there anything we want to talk about first? Uh... Say this is go. Well, I seen here at the beginning oh. of the book something about free comic book day. Is that something that's going to be? Is this the ad for that? Um, uh, it's yeah, usually in February or yeah. March, isn't it? Yeah, it's the usually big in February, order, the big March. One. Yeah, where they solicit everything. You see what all the choices are, and you have to have your orders in. Yeah, yeah. This looks like it's a lot of merchandise, like shirts and wristbands and yeah, stuff right. like that. Yeah, with, with longer lead times, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, but yeah, that's coming up. Always, you know, free comic mm-hmm. book day. May. First Saturday in May every mm-hmm. year. So, is that the same as Avengers then? movie again? Yep. Uh, the Avengers. The next two Avengers movies will be released on the next two free combo days. Huh. Cool. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. So in other words, come here and get your books and go see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't talk about the movie when you when come in here. here. <laughs> That's right. And nobody's seen it yet. Right. Since it takes Spoil some it. people <laughs> a ridiculous amount of time to even see uh, Thor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not quite as motivated with Marvel or he is with DC movies. I wanted to go see it. It's just work schedule. We got in the way and just right. didn't get to it. Just yeah, well, if you wanted to, you would find time. I know. <laughs> you know. You gotta have fun. Right. Pick on the new guy. Dark Horse. Dark Horse. Dark Horse. Uh, on page 38, we've got Incognito Renaissance. Uh, we talked about the reissue of the uh, special on here before and it now it looks like they're doing a mini series so i assume that's why they you know reprinted the original but this looks like a sort of a sequel mini series that they're doing and again this is one of the karen Berger books at dark horse right and you know incognito was a vertigo book previously so it looks like that's something she's brought over here mm-hmm. uh, gotcha. page 51 uh, not sort of comic related, but definitely pop culture related. We got the Legend of Zelda Encyclopedia, which was actually cool about it is there is a deluxe edition that comes in a Nintendo sleeve for the old NES style system, so it looks like it's an old Nintendo cartridge. Mm-hmm. So pretty nifty looking. It's got the gold uh, Zelda um, for the for the cartridge. So if you're a Legend of Zelda fan, something you might want to look into. On page 65, we have the Reefer Madness <laughs> trade, uh-huh. which looks like it prints a bunch of old Golden Age era, you know, warning stories about the Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what's notable about it, though, is the caliber of, you know, yes. creators that worked on this. We've got Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster of Superman, mm-hmm. Jerry Robinson, Jack Kirby, Frank Frazetta, you know, just... And more. Yeah. And more. So Pretty just some really... Some so what's the deal with big that? Names. Was that kind of a book they released to... I th- oh, yeah. it's a compilation of like warnings and and you know morale more mor- morality tales about marijuana use a lot of it apparently is uh, a little misinformed but uh, <laughs> right. but I try to steer people clear <laughs> I think it's more probably for uh, humorous you know <laughs> yeah at this point yeah, and it yeah. looks like it's Craig Yo is putting it together and he's got yeah. a lot of like golden age collections like this that are mm-hmm. supposed to be pretty nice Right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but it does cheech. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I didn't have very much in Dark Horse this time. <laughs> yeah, that's all I've got. Anything else in Dark Horse? No, I think I'm good. Well, coming into DC, I see we've got Sideways number one and the Terrifics number one yes, solicited. Three yes. solicited. Can we just can we just splice in last month's? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> talk <laughs> about this because these are the same things we just mm-hmm. went over last yeah. time. Yeah, I did decide to pick. I'm gonna. I'm putting in a pre-order for Terrific, so I did decide I'm gonna give that one a I'm shot. Give it a shot. Yeah. I'm gonna give that one a shot. So I'm just, interesting. I'm just wondering what it was, that, why they held it back, because we had talked about it may have been because of the covers or something. But right. I noticed they still got that in here. Well, I would right. bet those probably have a longer production time for sure. You know, but I mean, the rumors I was hearing was it was sort of like a low pre-order yeah. kind of well, issue. I think that's definitely the case because of all these, I think the Immortal Men, as I was putting my order in for last month, mm-hmm. that uh, Jim Lee drawn book, it's just been outright canceled. Mm-hmm. So I would say that was probably a low solicit, and Jim Lee's not going to take time if the book's mm-hmm. not selling, you know, yeah. to draw something. So. Okay, so here's a question for customers. If they are, if they put in a pre-order last time this was solicited with you, mm-hmm. do they need to reorder now that this has been re-solicited, or will you just keep that order moving I'll forward? I'll just keep that order moving right. forward, yep. Yeah. So if you order the last time, no fear, your order will still be good. <laughs> now, the other thing I was kind of hearing about some of this stuff, and it, maybe it was just some of the earlier ads, but I feel like this was all supposed to be spinning out of the metal crossover they're doing right now. Does oh, anybody really? have any idea how this would tie into metal? I have I'm no not idea. reading metal, so I have no <laughs> yeah. clue. Yeah, when, I just, no. I just don't it see it. Is it a new universe, basically, out of metal? Well, when, I, when me and Atchison was at Chicago back in April, they had a specific panel on this, and they talked about metal, and then they talked about this stuff. Mm-hmm. And the way they had talked is a lot of this was going to spawn as an aftermath to metal. Gotcha. And a lot of it was, um, what would you say earlier, the mortal men? Or yeah. That was one of them. And I think in the early metal issues, you can kind of see some of those characters yeah. teased. Mm-hmm. So that's... That was my assumption. Is yeah, it and metal me. is it me or does metal seem to be coming out way slower? Than no, that? it's they, it's pushed back. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. some of it it's been delayed. Okay, because they got those one shots out real quick, but it yeah. seems like the core book itself it's taking its sweet time. Coming yeah, out. and I think the we've got the last issue of that in here on page seventy seven of Dark Knight's Metal number six. Okay, and again this but this is also advanced solicited for March. Right. Oh, so yeah, yeah there's, there's definitely a, some delay. There's a lot of stuff that's way past February. I noticed several things for February and several things for April too for yeah. advanced solicits in this huh. catalog. Yeah, maybe I just happened to see the handful of things that were that way. Yeah, but. no, I noticed that too. But I'm right. it was more like product kind of stuff, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. merchandise that usually has a longer lead time anyway. Well, there were several. I noticed it's a few DC books is where I felt like I noticed it the kind most. Kind of kept going back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Page seventy-eight, Doomsday Clock. Right. Uh, has the first issue of that been out yet? Is yeah. It, yes. is it, okay. Yeah, one. All right. So. Yeah, if you're interested in that, be sure and sign up because it's, you know, the last issue sold out. You know, not yeah. that many yeah. people were signed up for it, but I, I got plenty of them in to cover our subscribe people signed up yeah. for it, you know, but it's still sold out. So be sure and yeah. don't yeah. miss the out. importance of pre ordering right there. That's yeah. right. And then issue 78 has got a couple of different covers, but one of them has a stack of pancakes yep. with maple syrup on the top that just happens to be a Rorschach. Yeah. Look. Looks so like yeah, check. it's a pretty cool cover. So right, kind of <laughs> clever. Yeah, just before that, a couple of pages before, it looks like they're going to be doing some crossover stuff with the uh, DC and the uh, um, Young Animal stuff. You know, so like there's a JLA Doom Patrol crossover one shot, Mother Panic, Batman, a couple of things. So if you like the Young Animal stuff, you know, and just want to see a crossover with DC, you know, check that out. On um, page 80, we've got Batman Sins of the Father, which apparently is a tie-in to the Telltale video game series. Uh, I, Well, I can't say I played through because I didn't finish the first game. I just really wasn't that into it. Uh, this is a comic book adaptation, though it looks like, or it ties in somehow. So if you like those games, this might be a book to check out. Uh, there's a nice variant cover here of, you know, sort of the game model version of Batman that looks kind of nice. Well, in 81, I've got the Batman, the Brave and the Bold, and it's Batman and Wonder Woman. It looks like Liam Sharp is back doing Wonder Woman because he left there for a while. Him and Greg Rucka were doing her book for a good while from Rebirth to about a few months ago, I think. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure how it's going to be right, and I've never really read it. I don't, has he wrote 
written anything before before this or I couldn't say I don't follow I don't, him that closely. Yeah. I'm just more familiar with him as an artist. Right. You know. So when, when we met him up in Chicago, I mean he's a great artist. Yeah. I love especially the Wonder Woman and the fantasy kind of artwork. Um, I just was curious about how he would be as a writer and everybody I talked to was I guess we'll like, find out. Well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. And right after that we've got the new Green Lantern Earth One hardcover. Uh, this is you know, they've been talking about this one for a while. Mm-hmm. So I I don't know about everybody else, but for me, the Earth One line is just kind of losing steam. Yeah, it's been right. hit or miss. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's just there's so many, just the gaps in between releases yeah, are so far. Yeah, lose interest by the time. You yeah. know, and it's like... And I'm not even familiar with that creative team, really. Are you familiar with either of them? I've heard of Gabriel Hardman. I think he's done some image stuff, but I haven't really read anything. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the artists. I know they were From supposed there. to do an Aquaman and a Flash Earth One book two there for a while. Yeah, they got pushed aside or canceled. It never. Well, happened. I think some of this stuff is just they are working on it that long. I think they're wow. they're not giving them hard deadlines. It seems like, and because I mean I'd heard about the Green Lantern a while back. Like I figured that was probably canceled by now, but here it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if they were at least doing like two of these a year, that'd right. be one thing. But you've got two years in between some of these releases. <laughs> You know, so it's like it's hard to keep track of what's going on even. But it right. feels like at the rate comics move now and, you know, reboots, it's like the rest of the world's moved on. Oh, Earth 1 is still the same thing? <laughs> like, right. okay. You know. Oh. And after that, we've got Young Monsters in Love. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Holy shot. Yeah. Jeff Lemire. Yep. James Robinson on there. Yeah. And your man, still... Kelly Jones, That's doing right. a nice Swamp Thing cover. Very cool. Yeah, and also Gilliam March and Fraser Irving, also artists on there, so it's going to at least be some good art in there right. with your crazy monster love stories. <laughs> Which so. we've all been wanting, right? That's yeah. right. <laughs> Page 84, gearing up towards ooh, 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 ooh. Action Comics 1000. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, the, not to be confused with the actual solicit for Action Comics yeah, right. 1000. Which at first glance is what I thought it was. But. Right. <laughs> yeah, and this is one too that it says April 11th for the release on yeah. this, so this uh-huh. is in advance. Yep. Yeah, this is a hardcover oversized one, right? That, yeah. The, the, I initially thought that was all we were getting, you know, was this yeah. $30 hardcover. Oh boy. Yeah, but yeah. not the case. Not Apparently the case. there's a yeah. $6.599 cover price that's going right. to be the regular newsstand edition. So. Or they heard people complain and changed their mind. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But it is supposed to feature a previously unpublished Golden Age Superman epic. Epic. So, epic. Mm-hmm. Epic. Yeah. So, it but just wasn't if... good enough for the Golden Age, but it's right. epic now. So. <laughs> you think that might have just been like a file story or something? Pro- <laughs> almost Probably. certainly. Almost that they'd certainly. they commissioned and never published. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, but yeah, we've got the regular monthly action. We've got nine ninety seven and nine ninety eight. So, I would assume that would be the next catalog, yeah. right? Should mm-hmm. be the Red Action 1000. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm assuming 1,000 variant covers. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <for that>. <laughs> <laughs> At least. You yes. know. At yeah. least. Right. So, I don't have anything until 108. So. Uh, on 93, we've got uh, Bane Conquest number 9, and this is the Bane miniseries they're doing right now with Chuck, Dix- Chuck Dixon and Graham Nolan, sort of the creators of Bane team. Uh, this has been a good book. Uh, it's still, it is definitely those creators. You know, working on this again, and I really like their run on Detective back in the '90s. So this has been kind of a fun book, and they're bringing back some of the characters from their run on there. So it's kind of a nice, you know, almost nostalgia kind of thing. But they had a really nice arc on Bane, just in general. If you go from the specials and some of the miniseries and into the regular Batman books, there's a kind of a nice arc to Bane that they worked on hmm. that other creators messed with. Yeah. <laughs> Well, one thing I know, I just noticed, I'm looking at some of these solicits on pages 94 and 95, that it says, a little note, retailers, this issue will ship with two covers. Please see the order form for detail. Includes a code for a free digital download of this issue. Now, I wish DC would make up their stinking mind about (laughs) putting the codes, either they're in or they're out. Just, like, make up your mind and either do it or don't do it. It seems like it's the three ninety nine ones where Mm -hmm. you get a code, and the two ninety nine you you get a digital code, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, I mean... That's, yeah. I mean, I don't keep that close to track, right, it, but it seems either. like that's what it is. Yeah. Huh, but, well, there's sense. some 399s that don't, that don't have that, though. Oh, really? Like the, right. Well, like the Bang Conquest. It doesn't have oh, the yeah. digital yeah. code, and it's 399. 
So, but it's mm-hmm. you know it's probably a little different setup. Yeah. Most of them. Maybe they're trying to bolster the sales on those books or something. Maybe they're flagging, you know, Batman yeah. Beyond and Batwoman, those titles. You know, yeah. Which, I guess they figure they're not really giving anything away if nobody's reading it right. anyway. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go. Yeah, I got something on 99. Uh, I did finally get around to reading The Demon Hell is Earth, number one. Mm-hmm. And it actually is pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty much, you know, Etrigan and Jason Blood in the middle of the desert. And mm-hmm. Crazy stuff happens, apocalyptic <laughs> stuff. So, right, it's cool. Is he rapping in this? Uh, <laughs> I'm know, I think right. He does rhyme. <laughs> right, but it'd be wrong if he didn't rhyme. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> they do it every now and then. Yeah, yeah it kind of teeters back and forth. Right? Ooh. Mm. Anybody what? got anything for one away? Nope. Nope. Who wants to talk about this one? I think we all probably want to talk about this one. I, was say, I got something on 104. All right, then make us wait. Go uh, ahead. I got, <laughs> I got the Harley and Ivy meet Betty and Veronica, number mm-hmm. five. Uh, I've just got caught up on reading this book, and it's really cool. Uh, it's kind of a uh, they swap minds kind of thing, so it's cool to see all those characters and each other, you know, the different bodies and stuff, doing their lives and stuff like that. Huh. So it's really cool. It's a fun book. So. Fun. Mm. I just no, I just noticed 106, Justice League 38 and 39, writer Christopher Priest. Yes. When did that change? Yeah. Uh, last, that? last week. Yeah, last week. Okay. The issue, last week's issue. It was the first wow, Priest okay. issue. Yep. I've been getting that in trades. So I haven't really been paying attention to it on a month-to-month basis, but I'm kind of interested to see that. Or if he's going to be off of Deathstroke then. He's still on for this issue, this issue of previews. but Right. Hmm. Mm. All right, 108, who's going to talk about it? I will. All right, so Mr. Miracle, number one director's cut. Uh, really good series. Um, at least, well, I guess I shouldn't say that. I only read the first issue, and it's actually really, really good. Got a minor grief with it, but um, but uh, with the director's cut, you basically get the, the artist's work, and you get notes, plus a brand-new eight-page story, which is going to go over Mr. Miracle's origin. So the Tom King stuff, they did this with, like, the Vision um, as well, so yeah. it's, if you missed it the first time, want to pick it up, or just want to get it with the nice black and white pencil art, then uh, this would be a good time to try that out. And they will probably do the rest of the series as well this way. Yeah, yeah, so. I've pretty well got caught up on that story, and I mean, it's still pretty solid. I like it. So. I'm waiting for the first trade. I'm waiting for the trade, but right, because it's going to be what twelve issues, right? Uh, is it a set number? Yeah, I think I, I think don't. So. I don't think it's ongoing. Yeah, I think it was a miniseries, wasn't okay. it? Yeah. They never really tell you anymore. Uh, yeah, you it's know? like they kind of do at the beginning. Yeah. And then they, they change their mind. They, you know, they're not committed. Well, between <laughs> at least six and twelve or something. Like yeah. That. Right. I don't have anything till one oh one twenty four. So. If you got something before that? Nope. Nope. You good. Uh, just. Again, I read primarily in trades, so the next uh, few trades are out. You got the third volume of uh, All Star Batman, mm-hmm. and then <coughs> turn it over to 126. Got the fifth volume of The Flash, and the first three volumes of The Flash have, for, since Rebirth have actually been I've really enjoyed those. And then uh, I guess that's it on the trades that I'm picking up from DC this month. I got something on 129. Uh, the Batman and Harley Quinn hardcover book. Uh, it's going to be written by Ty Templeton and then Rick Burchett's doing the art and a few mm-hmm. other people's going to be doing it. Um, it's pretty much a sequel, I'm assuming, based off of the recent Harley and Batman movie they did, which that was a fun movie. It was cool. Um, and I know those guys did a lot of that writing and art for the animated series books, didn't they? Like yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, the Batman Adventures stuff. Yeah, now, he's even done some. Rick Burchett's done some variant covers on the Batman TMNT yes, books uh-huh. as well. So, plus that, he's a super nice guy. Yeah. So if you're into the animated series Harley and Batman and stuff, that's probably something you might yeah. be interested. Now this was the digital first series. Did they publish this monthly at any point, or is this the first time we're getting a physical copy of this? Is the hardcover? Yeah, I think it's the hardcover. Okay. Oh, so yeah. This was the digital. First? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, like, I'll still usually pick up the, you know, monthly issues of that kind yeah, of stuff. Like, 
Yeah, because like that's how they did the Batman sixty six and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. But they were doing monthly issues of it too. You yeah. Know, like the Gotham City Garage, Garage and the Bomb Shells are all yeah. similar yeah. ones. But they, if they did issues, they totally got by me. I don't yeah, think, I, don't I can't imagine did. people weren't picking that up. Right. Yeah. It just says collects Batman, Harley Quinn, digital chapters one through twelve. Yeah. So yeah, it must just be that. Uh, next page on 130, we've got a new printing of the Batman Gothic story from Legends of the Dark Knight by Grant Morrison and Klaus Janssen. Uh, this was a really nice story. Uh, it's a cool, you know, sort of contained story by Morrison. Uh, I know we'd have at least one set of it here at Campus Comics. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I put probably together more the than other one, day. probably. So, but it's kind of a good story. So you can spend the seventeen dollars on the trade, or you can maybe get it cheaper here, get the real thing. Right. Get the issues yeah. yeah while you're talking about that i'd like to you know talking about this set that we have here in the store you know dan and a couple other people really put a lot of time into this back room here come up with a lot of sets if you haven't been in for a while come in and check it out there's what like almost four long boxes of, oh there yeah of there's got to be more i'm looking at a couple more stacks right now too okay. that we're gonna be adding to that so and yeah. we're and, yeah. yeah so they've been selling pretty quick so you may want to check out what we've got in there and that way you Get the issues instead of trades or whatever, you know, it's stuff that's sat here. And, you know, while you're here, we're starting to open up the back room more and more. You know, he's getting Dan and, and company. We're getting more and more of the books gone through. So we got a large section of dollar books back here. Um, so come check those out and uh, check out the bundles and all the stuff that come check out the back room. And it looks completely different if you haven't been in here for a while. So, yeah, like we're, you know, sorting through the books. We've barely gotten through the DC. So there's going to be a lot more probably DC sets we're putting together. And it's a nice way to read a complete story. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, odds are it'll be cheaper than the trade. Yep. Right. You know, so it's a nice way to kind of read some yeah, of that you stuff. You were even saying that about your appearances at the conventions you're working mm -hmm. right. You're just going to start, start taking sets. Yeah, and stuff. I've decided like next year for some, some of these smaller shows that I go to, I'm only going to be taking, I'm not going to take long boxes of, of dollar issues anymore. I'm just going to take, you know, I got like five or six long boxes of sets, sent limited series or you know longer runs and i've had better luck with those plus it's a lot easier on my back than hauling around <laughs> 30 30 long boxes of uh, comics book, yeah right? that i yeah. might sell five or six out of so right. i'm not uh, into that yeah <laughs> you're still gonna do your key issue stuff though? oh yeah yeah books. i'll yeah. do the wall books and and uh and just fewer for the smaller shows cape you know i'll still take the, the full setup for cape and dyersburg tennessee in march i'll take the full setup there and then metropolis for superman celebration but a lot of the smaller shows, which ones I go to, I'll, I'm going to scale back to just the bundles. So, yeah. Uh, on the same page here, we've also got Batman Noir, The Dark Knight Strikes Again, which is a black and white reprinting of that story. Uh, not a great story, but I feel like the only thing this is telling us is that there will be a noir for The Dark Knight uh, oh. Master, Master Race series. Right. Oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. they've obviously done Dark Knight Returns. They're not just going to skip ahead to the third. They're going to do the you know one in the middle, too. Right. So I feel like that's just kind of obligatorily go. being made so they could do the next one. Uh, I got something on 132. Go. Uh, looks like DC's putting out the Art of Darwin Cook trade. Um, if anybody that doesn't know Darwin Cook... He's, Shame on you. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's one of the greats. Um, I bought a few years ago, they came out with a hardcover of short stories, and it's got a lot of his short stories, but it's also got a lot of you know artwork and stuff, and some of those new 52 variants they did. Mm -hmm. And this here, it looks like it's going to collect a bunch more of those, plus other things, you know. So definitely worth checking that out. Yeah, and that's looks to be a pretty good deal, too. 408 pages for uh, $30, Oops. and... And we always do 20% off on trades and hardcovers here, too. So looking at that, instead of $30, it's going to be $24 plus tax, you know. So keep that in mind. <laughs> on 140, I don't know if anyone has I'm, anything before I'm, that. I'm done with DC, okay. so. So we've got the new Gotham City Garage statue, and this yeah. one's Supergirl. Uh, it's kind of a joke of she's listing, lifting up an engine block. But I feel like we're getting kind of cheated and not having a Supergirl bike right. <laughs> on this yeah. one. You know, we've got this big stand. It's like, right. yeah, that's kind of a funny thing. Yeah, but Wonder I, Woman got a bike. Harley yeah. got a bike. And Wonder Woman, got a bike. Wonder Woman didn't have an invisible bike. Right. You know, she had one. I feel like we, it'd be nice to see a Supergirl-themed motorcycle on this. Yeah, it'd be good. 
And I don't know what's up. I'm going to have to talk to Jeff Dixon. He's He's got one of those on order. What's up with that? It's not Batman related. I'm not sure we can allow Are that. Are you sure he's got that and not the Two-Face coin underneath? Oh, good call. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't, I don't understand this. Yeah, the, we've got the DC Gallery that, Two-Face coin uh, on yeah, the bottom of the page here, which is a replica of Two-Face's uh, scarred coin. Gotcha. Well, well sorry, you. Jeff. I doubted you. <laughs> I don't know what I think about the Supergirl statue with the tramp stamp, though. I don't know what to think about that. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how does that happen? How do you how do you tattoo Supergirl? Kryptonite yeah. <laughs> needles. Kryptonite yeah. needles and ink. Yeah. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, the Two Face coin though. I thought that was cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah. The last few previews they've had kind of like trophy collectibles yeah. of yeah. Batman's rogue. So right. if you're like Dixon, you know who's getting oh, yeah. set his back cable, yeah. that'd be something cool to display. Yeah. Is like. Fat road trophies. The only thing you probably couldn't get is the T Rex. Right, yeah. Giant penny. <laughs> Giant penny. You're just not trying hard yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, page 141, right next, it kind of answers a question we had last month of whether the black and white action figures meant the end of the black and white statue yeah, line. No. Um, that's a no, because there's a new uh, black and white statue in here by Becky Clune. It looks pretty cool. Crazy cape going on, wrapping over his head for some reason, but we'll give it. Give it a shot. Jeff's down for one of those. Uh, page 143, I guess they're going to continue the uh, concept of deluxe bombshell statue. This time they did, last time they did the Harley on the bomb, like the original artwork by Aunt Lucia. But uh, this time it's just kind of an original concept of uh, Wonder Woman holding up a sword and holding a shield with some arrows stuck in it. Still pretty nice looking, so if you're into the bombshells, you may want to check that out. And some of those, like the Harley on the bomb, uh, I actually liked it better than I did the first one. I thought it was really nice. Right. Yeah, yeah the Wonder Woman, it kind of loses, you know, the Wonder Woman original Bond shell had a real, like, Rosie the Riveter feel yeah, to it, you right. know, and this kind of loses that, but but whatever, you know. I wish they would show some more turnarounds of these statues. Yeah, these be good. You get the one nice shot, but it's like, what's it look like from another angle, you know? Right. I'm surprised he, they haven't done, like, a scan code where you can hold it up to your phone. Yeah. And, like, that way. Right. But like especially on this one, like what's the, her shield look like? All yeah. I see is the back of it. Yeah. Right. You know. And I guess that's a ru ruined or wrecked tank she's standing on. It looks like I guess. You done with DC? Yep. yep. I've got well, I was going to say I have nothing in IDW, but I got li very little in IDW, so I'm not till 177. So you guys go for a while. Well, so I just got one in IDW. GI Joe meets a six million dollar man. I oh yeah. That's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Do they recruit him? <laughs> I feel like they would want him. <laughs> Some of these IDW crossovers, like I got the Green Lantern and the uh, Star Trek one, and it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I know the first miniseries they did was really good, the second one was okay, but some of these are hit and miss. But it's a cool way to see some of your favorite franchises to interact. Yep. 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 Yeah. On 161, we've got the trade for the Star Trek The Next Generation Mirror Broken. Uh, this was a pretty good series I read monthly where it's uh, the next generation crew of the Mirror Universe from the classic original series episode. Uh, it's a really fun story of uh, Picard and his crew capturing the Enterprise. Huh. They aren't assigned to it, they take it. <laughs> you know, and it is sort of like the evil versions of all these characters. And it was a really good, fun story, and I kind of wish it was a monthly Oh, it, was, yeah. it was just that good. It just you know some really fun concepts thrown in there. Cards like I'm the captain now. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. So one seventy seven. I uh, have a a new I guess a new printing of the one. So this is a book from the what was it the early late eighties or yeah. or because it predated like Watchmen. So it's kind of like one of these one of the really early like what if superheroes were real. So we've got superheroes in a America versus the Soviet Union type error setting. Rick Beach always has done this thing where he likes to, again, make it just like as if they were real. Um, he did that with, what, Brat Pack, and then he did a run on uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like in the in the 20, the issue numbers like 20s that were a lot more realism based. So hmm. now this is a series you can probably find. There's probably a bundle, if not real close to a bundle here someplace in the I think we might have the a, back I think room. we might have a couple of them. I don't yeah. know if we have a set of the original <clears throat> But uh, it actually is a pretty good story. Um it probably will feel a little dated because of the, you know, USA versus Russia thing, but uh but it's actually pretty good and they're doing this as single issues as opposed to like a trade. Uh -huh. So yeah, so they're remastering I guess the colors and stuff. So yeah, I bet the printing processes now are probably going to make oh, this look way better. Way better, yeah. 
You know, some of that 80s stuff, it just looked like it was colored with a marker or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Anything else in IDW? Uh, just on 180, we've got a lot of the uh, sort of artifact and artist mm-hmm. editions they're doing. we got Jim Starlin's Marvel Cosmic edition which will be out in april uh right before april. infinity war yeah so surprise, there surprise. you go i'm surprised they didn't put infinity Mar- jim starlin's marvel infinity edition yeah <laughs> so that's it for me in idw image yeah <coughs> kicking right off the bat looks like they got some new kick ass coming out yeah, and I think this is supposed to be a new kick-ass character. This isn't Dave from the previous series. I think the concept is supposed to be Hit Girl is training a new character to be kick-ass. Huh. And it looks like we've got reprints of all the previous kick-ass uh, miniseries and Hit Girl oh, in right. here. And yeah. then they are starting a new Hit Girl series, too. Yeah. And I know... So this moved to Image, huh? What did the Icon yeah. thing before, yeah. which was an imprint of Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Miller made his big deal with Netflix oh, and that. all that, and so it looks like this is part of this. I'm not. Is Icon still around? I haven't seen anything heard, from it in a long time. I heard some time. rumors that it was gone. Right. Again, I don't. I don't think I've seen anything from it since like even Nemesis. That you know, yeah. Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. yeah so. I mean, nobody at Marvel called me. Right. But that's just, <laughs> that's just what I've heard. And but you yeah, are I know there's supposed to be. A, I think. Miller's at least doing the first storyline, but then I know like Kevin Smith is supposed to be taking over Hit Girl, I think, for a run. Huh. And then it sounds That'll like they're going to take gonna have... forever to yeah, get out Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know there... it sounds like they're going to have rotating creative teams on these. Well, maybe if he knows now, he needs to get four issues out before the first four yeah. ends, and maybe he'll have that story written by then. Right. <laughs> My image guess for the month is oh. uh, VS number one on, uh, I don't know if that's VS or Versus, I don't know, but you got Isad Ribic artwork on it. So, from his stu- early Thor stuff, um, that should be at least pretty to look yeah. at. I don't know how good it's actually going to be to read, but it'll definitely be worth taking yeah, a look okay. at. So, Not much for me on Image this time. Mm-hmm. That, well, was, that was it for me. <clears throat> on 196, we've got probably the thing I'm most excited about in this catalog is The Return of Moonshine oh, yeah. by Azarello and Rizzo. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a while since 6 came out, and here we've got 7. So it looks like we've got the start of a new arc. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. I was kind of iffy about it when I heard the concept, but turns out werewolf moonshiners are an interesting thing. <laughs> werewolf bootleggers. So right. uh, I'm looking forward to that. All right. Um, on 217, we've got a new issue of Mage, The Hero Denied. Uh, again, this is sort of the wrapping up the Mage trilogy by Matt Wagner. I've been reading this; it's been pretty good. Uh, I've been waiting for this for years. <laughs> right? You know, I met him at a convention over a decade ago and asked him what was going on. So he just, you know, other projects got in the way and things like that. So we're finally wrapping this up. So you know, calling the series "The Hero Denied," it's probably not going to end well. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I'm looking good. forward to it. Um, on 233 in some of the merchandise we've got a nice Walking Dead Ezekiel and Shiva two pack and it looks like there's a regular and bloody variant but those there's not great pictures of them here but it looks like nice figures and again if you've been watching Walking Dead you know Shiva really stands out on that show Marvel yep Marvel well, page two of Marvel, you got a new X-Men title, X-Men Red, led by Jean Grey. Spoilers, Jean Grey, Comes adult back. Jean Grey coming back. Comes so back. actually, the, the, the things that's most interesting to me is we got Nightcrawler back on the team mm-hmm. for issue one. And I should point this out, we have a Rob Liefeld variant <laughs> cover yes. with, with, with feet. feet. <laughs> with feet. feet so, yes. So you actually see the feet of most if not, of all the characters, I believe. So yeah, okay. that is a surprise. I figured it'd be hidden in the water, oh, but they are what? there. Jean Grey's feet are covered up by X twenty three. Oh, okay. So, but we got yeah. everybody else. But everybody so, else has got, everybody else's got else's at least one there. foot out. All right. So, okay. Uh, Jean Grey has been gone for how long? And this is the costume they bring her back. Yeah. In? <laughs> what? In the it world? seems like a bad variant of her nineties costume, which I was never that big on to begin with. Mm-hmm. But I realize that's a lot. You know, that's a generation's Jean Grey. But this version is just like, bleh. Yeah, it's not very good. We couldn't, yeah. <laughs> we couldn't get somebody to workshop this a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, the gambit looking headpiece going on. Oh, there. back to our bundles here at the store too. I'm pretty sure we've got a couple of the last story in Grant Morrison's new X Men run where Jean Grey dies. Oh yeah. You know, so we have some of those if you want to see the, how she died before she comes back. Which which death of Green Jean Grey is that? <laughs> I thought yeah. she died in the X Men like one. 30, yeah. 140 range. <laughs> well, this has been the one that's stuck the longest, I think. <laughs> Page 10, just continuing the uh, weekly Avengers stories. Oh, yeah. So you've got 5, 6, 7, and 8 of, of uh, Avengers No Surrender. So if you can't get enough Avengers, you will over the next few months because mm-hmm. it'll be every single week for the Avengers. Yeah, and then it looks like we've got the 300th issue of spectacular spider-man uh it's got some nice covers there by alex ross and is that marcos martin yeah i'm i'm gonna do i'm sorry go ahead it looks like we've got a lot of milestone issues coming up from marvel which obviously was the whole point of the renumbering renumbering yeah but it looks like we've got several in this catalog that are real close to hitting those issues i'm gonna jump back to page 14 just for a second Brian Michael Bendis and Iron Man is actually a pretty good convert, uh, combination. Uh, I've finished up uh, Infamous Iron Man, where you kind of have Doctor Doom as Iron Man. It's really, really good. Uh, you might come in and check on pre-ordering some trades of that. I'm sure Mike can get some of those in for you. So something to think about if you're looking for something to read. Uh, we've got Daredevil 598 and 599 uh-huh. in this catalog, which again means next time will be 600. Uh-huh. Uh, this is sort of continuing the Mayor Fisk storyline. Uh, I've only read the first issue of the Daredevil uh, Legacy run right now, but it was really good. It was just a really con- good concept of Matt's been gone for a while, comes home, and Fisk has been elected uh-huh. mayor of New York. And and I did find out from I'm finally start working through Secret Empire, and the whole Mayor Fisk thing is related to. Secret Empire. Oh, so okay. yeah. So just as an FYI, I don't have anything till thirty-eight. Yeah, I don't think anything for them. All right. Well, page thirty-eight got a Black Panther annual number one. Uh, has a list of writers here: Don McGregor, Christopher Priest, Reggie Hudlin. So they're going to be reprinting some of the earlier um, Black Panther uh, stuff, probably going back to the Jungle Action, and of course the Christopher Priest run. And then the Reggie Hudlin run on, uh, on like, what is it, Black Panther, I forget what, the, what it is, uh, who is the Black Panther. I feel like they're doing uh, Don McGregor a little disservice by putting Reggie Hudlin in the same book as uh, Don McGregor. Because uh, Don or D- Reggie Hudlin doesn't have a whole lot of good stuff to say about Don McGregor's work. Um, this is, he did a, um, a like a, a write-up, a write-up in the, the trade of the Black Panther uh, who is the Black Panther? And here's what he has to say about Don McGregor. Um, let me find it in here. Yeah, the Panther's appearance in the Lee Kirby issues of the Fantastic Four and Captain America were great, but nothing after that was able to recapture the original magic. He never made much of an impression on me during any of his Avenger stints, and I never liked the McGregor written series in Jungle Action. <laughs> I even preferred the loopy but uh, loopy but fun late Kirby series to McGregor's morose character that endlessly droned on with overflowing captions, which even more yakety yakking enough already. <laughs> and I'm like, Reggie Hudlin, <laughs> you fool. <laughs> you get props for doing Milestone and, and being part of that group, but don't attack the people who come before you. So, I mean, it's just, they really should not have put, they shouldn't have piled him in with Don McGregor. They should have let McGregor stuff stand on its own and Christopher Priest stuff stand on its own and Reggie Hudlin stuff can go to the back issue bin where it belongs. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. So anyway, it's got those three creators on it. And, uh, I think the, the really Don McGregor, his early black Panther stuff is kind of like really your first almost graphic novel type, um, arcs where you had, what was it? Panther's prey and Panther. I can't remember like the three arcs, but they just spread over a very long period of time in like jungle action and, and uh, Marvel Comics presents, so he he's he deserves more credit than what he's getting from from some of these newer creators and writers. So. Okay, I'll get off my <laughs> soapbox now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, well, on page sixty three of the Marvel catalog here, we've got a weird sort of announcement of where is Wolverine? Find him in post credit scenes at the end of key Marvel titles starting this January. 
What's a post credit scene oh, in a comic book? book? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this just like the last page, page? in the book, maybe? Like Aren't before... the credits for comics like the very first page? Yeah. <laughs> so is he just in the issue somewhere? Oh, my. I mean, I think it might just be like a fun thing to figure out what issues he's in or something. But, you know, I assume it ties into whatever the next big story is. Huh. With what, that. what page is that on? It's 63. It's 60. not actually marked, oh, though. Okay. I'm going to go back to 50 and 51. Because we have Infinity War coming out. We do need some titles on the shelves that have Infinity in them. Mm -hmm. So we get Infinity Countdown, Adam Warlock number one. Who won't be in the movie. Who, yeah, and then we have Infinity Countdown Prime number one. So And it's classified. Ooh. So, yeah, we don't get much of uh, information on that. Uh, we have listings for the variant covers, though. Okay. But there's a Hulk variant cover for that and then a trading card variant by John Tyler Christopher. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you could at least show a variant. Yeah. Especially the trading card one. Yeah. That like, yeah. definitely that's, should have been LD That's not going to be any spoilers. My next thing's on 75, so. Yeah, I don't have anything to 80. Okay. So page 75, we've got Star Wars Thrawn, number one. So anybody who's read any of the early uh, Star Wars books, the, the Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn, like the uh, actual novels. Yes, yeah, real, you know, books, books without without <laughs> pictures, right? No funny books. So yeah, so they're tough for some of us to read, but uh, this one was actually really, really good. The, probably the best character, with the possible exception of Mara Jade, to come out of that book series was Grand Admiral Grand Admiral Thrawn. So they are bringing Grand Admiral Thrawn into the current canon of the uh, Mar or the Star Wars uh, universe, and uh, so that's a good. This would be a good time to learn a little bit about uh, Thrawn. So, yeah, I thought I've never read those books, but you always hear how good they are, and so it was kind of nice to see them bring that character yeah. in and not just kind of tossing them to the side. Most of those early novels are pretty bad, but the Zahn books stand out yeah. abo ab around above the rest of them. Yeah, so. I'm just noticing too, this is drawn by Luke Ross, who he had a really nice run, early run on Jonah Hex, the series that they did a couple of years ago that was pretty nice. So, it should at least be good art in here. My next thing's on 85. Uh, on 80, we've got the Marvel Premiere Collection Cable Statue. Yep. Uh, this is just sort of a nice, sort of classic cable, the, the standing on a pile of rubble or machinery with a giant gun. Yep. And I think it hooks into the Deadpool statue that was released previously. Mm -hmm. And I think there's supposed to be a Domino one coming out, too, that they all sort of connect together. Like vinyl? Or... Uh, it no. says resin. Yeah. This is a... Their statue's been pretty nice. I had a... Uh, Iron Man in here, the resin one who was in here, didn't stick around too long. Because again, you're getting like a full one six scale statue, you know, for like 150 bucks as compared to 300, you know, which you're, yeah. you know, easy to pay for. So they're definitely worth it, you know, if you're into the collectible statues. <clears throat> we'll follow that up with a couple of uh, the Marvel Gallery stuff, which I always talk about every month. Because you know, if you just want a figure to sit on your shelf and you don't care about necessarily about collectability but you just want some decent size and nice looking to sit on your shelf those gallery figures are hard to beat you know mm -hmm. 45 50 bucks you know 45 dollar retail i sell them for 40 here we just got the uh gladiator hulk from thor ragnarok came in this week you know 50 dollar piece i'm doing 45 on it you know and it looks great you know yeah i came in and saw that sitting on the shelf tonight and i'm like that's 45 bucks yeah <laughs> yeah i just it looks really nice and it's big too yeah. it's not like a, they've shrunk it down or anything right it's a there regular full-size looking statue mm -hmm. well, what's cool too is having the vinyl figures of pvc is you know it is going to cost less but also the risk of it getting broke is a little lesser too especially if like you want good quality pieces like let's say you got little kids running around or something kind of display or cats or cats, cats. <laughs> <laughs> right but i've got tons of them and they're good. Cats yep. or figures? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't Not a cat. Guy. I don't think anybody here has a cat, probably. No. But, yeah. no. but I just hear horror stories from people with statues about cats. 84, 85, we've got a Jim Starlin on Thanos again. Oh. What's interesting about this one is penciled by Alan Davis. But I don't think the current political climate, it's the best time to bring Star Fox back as a character based on what his yeah. uh, power yeah. set is. Right. <laughs> yeah, true. But anyway, he's back. 
I remember like, actually reading about him in the 70s, and he was known as Eros. Yeah, Eros, time. yeah, Eros, oh, yeah, Star yeah. Fox, yep. Yeah. So yeah. Thanos' brother. But uh, right. if you don't know, he can uh, uh, manipulate the pleasure centers of uh, females, mm. mental brain pleasure centers. So there was a lot of, uh, yeah, he would be under a definite sexual harassment uh, <laughs> suit now. If, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's a subplot in the book. Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it more, is. More okay, maybe yes. So. It, that's the whole story, just. Scenes. scenes, yeah. Right. <laughs> we got Matt Murdock in it. Yeah. We've got uh, he's, Jenner, his, he's yeah. doing his job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as as son of uh, it's yeah. rock bottom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Black Panther coming up, page uh, eighty eight. Yeah, so page 88 uh, oh, with yeah. the movie coming out in February. Is that right? So these yeah, will be yeah. hitting the shelves just about the right time. The uh, t- I'm gonna butcher this name, Ta Nehisi Coates. Uh, his Black Panther stuff here lately has actually been pretty good, so I've I've enjoyed that. And then they're reprinting some of the other stuff over the next few pages, including the uh, some of the Christopher uh, Priest stuff and and Black Panther Panthers Rage, Don McGregor. Uh, I won't Got some mention, good Reginald Hudlin stuff. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, the if you want the Reginald Hudlin stuff, it's already on the shelf at Campus Comics. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> didn't they do that sort of? Uh... Flash comic cartoon of that years ago. They did, and it was on Netflix for a while. Yeah, so I remember it was originally supposed to. I can't remember if it was through BET, maybe, or maybe they <laughs> yes. produced it or something. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if it ever aired on there or not. Yeah, but it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was kind of nifty to see it in that regards. But uh, and it had Baytrock Zilipa. Uh, I got something on ninety two. I didn't have it marked, but it just I was thinking about it. Um, Miles Morale. Um, Ultimate Spider-Man, all of this. I guess you guys see the trailer for yeah. the animated movie coming out Mm-mm. next Christmas. Nope. Yeah, yeah. Sony's is, do- is doing the animated Spider-Man film, and it's a Miles Morales story. Nope. So, sure, there's going to be a lot of stuff building up to that. And here we've got this nice big omnibus. Mm-hmm. Looks like this collects all his appearances up to a certain point here. I don't really keep up with the characters, so I can't say exactly how much this is. But it's, you know, 1,168 pages, so... Wow. It's definitely a good starter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to learn about the character. That's all I had in Marvel, so you guys finish it out there. Well, 94, they got the Venom Omnibus, Volume 1, hardcover. Uh, looks like it collects Lethal Protector 1 through 6, Funeral Pyre 1 through 3, and so on and so forth. Yeah, far. so just a ton of Venom appearances and miniseries from the 90s and things. Many of which you can probably pick up as a bundle at Campus Comics. Yeah, got some. <laughs> uh, Again, Venom was one of the books I really liked with Legacy because they had Mark Bagley back doing it again. Stuck around for four issues, and now he's gone. (laughs) So I'm like, I'm done with this book. (laughs) Uh, My last thing is we've got the obligatory blank posters. (laughs) At the back here where we have the Infinity Countdown Mm -hmm. classified poster. Uh... I really want them to send me a classified poster. That's right. That, this is the poster I want. Exactly <laughs> I like want, this. I wanted right. to say classified on mm-hmm. Starfield. And again, there's a couple other Avengers and oh, Daredevil 600 by Alex Ross poster that they don't show an image for. Mm-hmm. I guess they're worried people will blow that up and print their own. Yeah, so. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I want some nice big pixelated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, with a watermark on it or something. That's all mm-hmm. they got to do. Uh, back well, they'll put the... some put some Photoshop effect on it and then resell it that way. Yeah. So at conventions, so I got two forty eight in the back of the book. Uh, I don't have anything before that. All right, well, two forty eight um, Abstract Studios. Uh, you've got the Rachel Rising uh, Omnibus. This is a really good story. Uh, it's one of those where I start a trade and it feel like it'd be five minutes later and I was done with the trade and ready for the next one and had to wait for a while to pick that one up. So it's a just a Really, really good supernatural story. If you so, if you like the supernatural and with the art by, uh, I was gonna say the wrong name, Terry Moore. It's just it's good. So it's definitely something that you should uh, check out. Uh, in aftershock, uh, I finally picked up some issues of Garth Ennis's Jimmy's Bastards. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's sort of their James Bond takeoff. Uh, we've got the first trade in here, collecting the first five issues, I think. And then they have, you know, issue seven is also solicited in here. Uh, it's just sort of a 
James Bond archetype fighting all his illegitimate children who come <laughs> after him. Uh, it's a fun. So literally, it's yeah, funny. literally, yeah, yeah. yeah. Poor, yeah. 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 It's just like yeah. he tore his way around the world and left these children in his wake, who have all bonded against him now and they're trying to kill him (laughs) no no fun no pun intended (laughs) but you know the funny thing is we've got this and then there's been you know some other things lately like secret service you know the kingsman movies it's like these other you know uh properties are doing old school james bond sometimes better than james bond Bond, is to make anymore (laughs) You know, we've got Dynamite doing some James Bond books that I haven't been too crazy about, but I kind of like these sort of knockoff homage ones that we're getting. They're just sort of the fun, old-school kind of spy stories. My next thing's on 296. And on 276, it looks like we've got a new trade of Afterlife with Archie, wow. uh, Volume 2. And we've got a new issue of this Betty and Veronica Vixens. Has anybody checked um, that out? Does anyone get that? Or? Yeah, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah it gets anything Archie <laughs> right. pretty much. Uh, yeah, but I think the first issue just came out, so I don't yeah. know what you know what he thought okay. about or anything yet. Because yeah, it looks to me it looks almost like a bombshell kind of oh, version of yeah. Betty and Veronica. Gotcha. But I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, it's not in here, but I heard they are doing another horror book of uh, Veronica as a vampire. I can't no remember really. what they're calling it now, but I saw that online the other day. And huh. again, it's not solicited yet, so I'm sure we'll talk about it more when it actually shows up. Right. But it looks like they are going all in on some of these Archie horror books lately. Right. So you should call it I Veronica. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like Veronica Elica or something. Oh, it's like a Vampirella so. kind oh, of take yes. off with Veronica, okay. but I, I know I that butcher that. Yeah. No, yeah, I it's, think it's you're something right. like yeah, that. You're right. Something like that. I'm on 296. 296, you want it, you go. Uh, yeah, they're going to do Jim Henson's uh, Labyrinth, number one. Uh, so if you're big into that movie, which I know there's a lot of people out there. Or big into Bowie. Or big <laughs> yeah. into Bowie, or, yeah, that'd probably be something to be checking out. I know James and them. Right, real they're big, big on that. A Bill Sienkiewicz uh, variant cover yeah. on that one. Don't tell him what the... <laughs> what the percentage oh, yeah. is on that, how yeah. many you got to order to get that. But uh, but the Fiona Staples cover, too, which is never a bad thing. No, yeah. no. Is she yeah. the main cover? Looks like she's the main yeah, cover. Yeah, like she's the main one. So, yeah, yeah so that's main a win. Cover. And then the subscription variant by Rebecca Isaacs. The rest of them are incentives. So incentives, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to order enough of that to get those unless you want to the way it looks pick here, them up. The way it looks here, that labyrinth, it's, I guess, going to be kind of an origin of him. Yeah, him, him, yeah. Him, so. I don't know that I've seen that movie all the way through. Mm-hmm. I probably should sit down and watch that at some point. So, yeah, right. But because they're doing that, and then they're doing the uh, ongoing, or well, I guess it's ongoing at this point. It's probably a long mini series of the. What's the other one I'm trying to think of? The Dark Crystal. You know, yeah. The other thing like that. They're doing that. And people that like Dark Crystal seem to be really enjoying that book. There's mm-hmm. just a few people to pick it up, but they seem to like it. You know, I was just thinking of that because my kids, you know, both kids of the '80s, and they liked the Labyrinth, but man, they hated Dark Crystal. They, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it was just long and boring to them or something. But yeah, I liked I Dark Crystal. I even we watch that every once in a while. Yeah. So my, of course, my son hates it. Right, so. Yeah. <laughs> so it must just be a, maybe it's too long and boring for him. Well, maybe it's just like we had we didn't have as much uh, to entertain us, so it was more entertaining maybe than it should have been. Right. Because we were desperate for more Muppets. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. So my next thing's in Dynamite. You make anything for Dynamite? Yeah, on two ninety under Bongo, we've got a Krusty the Clown one shot from The Simpsons. Uh, it looks like he's getting his own title here, and it looks like. He's the only person in town, like everybody else is gone. They, they call it the Laugh Man on Earth. <laughs> it looks like, but that might be a fun story there about Krusty. And SpongeBob comics. Uh, on 299, under Boom, we've got Goldie Vance hardcover, or a soft cover trade, and I think they just signed a movie or TV deal for this hmm. title. I read a preview thing a while back that was pretty good. Uh, but if you want to get into that, my, now might be a good time. So you can complain about how everything's wrong in the TV show or movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't have anything else till Dynamite. 
I was not at anything specific in dynamite, but if you like blank covers to have artists draw stuff for you, they've got a Deja Thoris blank cover, they've got a Pumpkinhead blank cover, they've got a Xena Warrior Princess blank cover, they've got a Red Sonya blank cover. I was surprised they didn't do one of the kisses as a blank cover. Uh-huh. Um, but with all the, we've got, there's surprisingly a lot of pretty good local artists in the area. I mean, you've got what Matthew Miller and Monty Baldwin and Justin Holman and Matt Speroni and Joe Dodd. And, and I'm forgetting some names. Uh, who, who am I forgetting? I feel bad. My apology, Nathan Bonner. Um, I apologize to all the guys I didn't just name off, but if you were looking for something cool to get artwork done on, the blank covers are kind of neat. And if any of those characters are in your wheelhouse, something to think about getting. And most of the time, the blank covers aren't like a special, you yeah. have to order like 10 of a title to get right. those. So sometimes they can they can be relatively easy to get. Mm-hmm. So Or you can just get a blank piece of paper and staple to your comic. Have them draw that. <laughs> you can do DIY blank cover. Gosh, not the same. Go. It's not the same. <laughs> uh I know I just was kind of talking trash about the Dynamite James Bond stuff, but we have a James Bond M one-shot coming out. And I did just pick up the James Bond Solstice one-shot that came out, and that was actually pretty good. I like that. I think maybe it's just the smaller stories are better. I think maybe just sort of the longer arcs is maybe what I wasn't liking. So I'll probably check out this one-shot that's about James James Bond's boss, M. My next thing's 380, so... No, nothing until then. Nothing until then. Uh, Dead of Winter, Good Good Dog trade paperback. This is actually a comic based upon a board game. <laughs> so uh, if you have any interest, if you've played the Dead of Winter board game, then this might be a something that you might be interested in. So yeah, there's a game called Dead of Winter. Um, I, if I remember right, there's like a card that you can get that's one of the dogs. So it probably I'm, it's been a while since I've played the game. But uh, so yeah, good good dog trade paper. Yeah, I saw that. It looked kind of interesting, but like I've never even heard of the game. I haven't played it. Yeah. I've uh, only played it a couple of times, but uh, but uh, yeah. So anyway, just something to think about if you're a big board gamer. Um, you're just like big in your board. When yes. You're playing games or B O A R D, uh, not B O R E D. Okay. Hey, I think I spelled those correctly. <laughs> Job. <laughs> Woohoo! Yay me. <laughs> on uh, 352, we have Is This Guy For Real, the unbelievable Andy Kaufman graphic novel. This is, by, this is by Box Brown. What is up with all the Andy Kaufman stuff now? Like, he's got a, there's like a, that uh, J- Jim Carrey, yeah. Andy Kaufman special on Netflix now. I got the right. Andy Kaufman book here. I had some students in class yesterday just talking about Andy Kaufman out of the blue. Yeah, just yeah. out of nowhere. It's like, what is going on with the resurgence of Andy Kaufman all of yeah. a sudden? Well, this is one I definitely want to pick up because he has previously done an Andre the Giant bio comic, which is also resolicited here on the next page. But yeah, this is one I'll probably check out. This Andre the Giant one was really nice, so I, you know, definitely want to see what he does here. We usually skip through this stuff, and while they're flipping for their next pages, um, there. If you are into, I'm going to say manga, and you can butcher me online, but manga. I guess yeah. <laughs> We're in the United States of America. It's manga. <laughs> <laughs> but not necessarily up our, our cups of tea, but there is a wide selection there, and Mike can order those for you if it is something that you are interested. So we don't mean to disrespect that, but uh, it is it is available for order. So if there's something yeah. you're interested in, you know, it's just, Mike yeah. can get it. He just needs a little advice a little, on what yeah, to get a little guidance. point in the right yeah, direction. I yeah, know. I would have no idea what to yeah. order because there's a huge selection yeah. in almost in every single previews right. catalog. So it's available. So, we yeah. can do that, but we just just kind of stick to what we know here. Yeah. You know, and we don't know that unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on three fifty six, I just want to point out too. You know, we've got Christmas right around the corner, and we're in Hanukkah right now too. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a lot of. Uh, Overstreet price guides, grading guides. If you've got a comic collector in your life, this is you know probably it's something they mm-hmm. want to check out, or mm-hmm. you know yep. if they're just getting into it, these are some good sort of gifts to give. Right. You know that are pretty universal to comic collecting. And you should get the Rom the Space Knight cover oh. of Overstreet yeah. price guide. I mean, I don't know why you would when you've got a Batman <laughs> cover right there, because but, it's you know. Rom the Space Knight. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just made my argument for me. <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. That really hurt. Ouch. Yeah, and like uh, Dan brought up, you know, at the Christmas here, you know, it's just like 
there's a lot of stuff you can come in and check out again you know pretty inexpensive figures here nice things uh, of course you know a lot of comic collectors are kind of notoriously high, hard to buy for you don't know what they have oh, what yeah. they're looking for what they don't want we do gift cards awesome. any dollar amount that you want to do you know just we can just load it on a card and they can come pick out what they want you know and it, that's just a lot of times the easiest way to go and again always uh you know collecting supplies you know if you ha if the person you have in your life is a collector come get bags and boards comic boxes you know a lot of times collectors can always use that stuff it's never going to go to waste you know so we'd be happy to help you out with that too so got a couple of pre-printed uh, got some nice graphic boxes in this past week with batman on them i got more of those coming i got a harley quinn uh, boxes coming you know they're a little little extra but you know they're nice yeah put your books in them they look nice sitting out so just a white box that gets dingy looking yeah, all the time. i wish i wish those were around when i started collecting because i have so many just old long boxes and short boxes which are real crisp bright white when you buy them right yeah 20 years later they're dingy and banged up you should try hauling them around to conventions and see how long they last <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah like a faded you know graphic would look a little nicer at least right you yeah. know yeah and it is and they're usually printed on mm -hmm. slick paper yeah they're really know, they're really eye-catching too yeah they kind of got a wax coating to yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're cool. I get, cause I got a Batman and a Harley one. Of, like, I put a lot of my Harley, my key issues of Harley stuff and mm -hmm. trades and things like that in that box. Yeah. And there's a lot of those that can be ordered, too. You know, it's hard to keep everything in stock. But, you know, there's all companies put them out. There's Hellboy boxes. There was Goon. You know, a lot of stuff. I can't get them all all the time. But there is stuff to check out, you know, just to kind of give that little extra bit to your uh, collection. Uh, on 384, we've got what I think is probably the weirdest book in here this month, is My Boyfriend is a Bear. And that's not code. That's not a metaphor. It is a, it is a literal Here's black a bear, bear is her boyfriend. Okay. So is this, this might be, just be kind of a fun story, but it's... Kind of weird. Bear meets girl. Almost sounds like a Cartoon Network show. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like it's not an anthropomorphic bear necessarily. He is just, just saying, Graw. <laughs> it seems to be the only dialogue in the preview here. He's just sitting around eating. Hmm. Reminds me of that Family Guy skit where it's the woman who's married to an elephant. That's some new sick. That, and that was an advanced solicit for April. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Probably testing the water to see how many yeah. are going to be buying that. Yeah. I, don't have anything, I don't have anything until like some of the shirts. I got some on 387. I was kind of curious. Do you, you guys know anything about this thing called the Damned? That uh, looked interesting. I read. I think I read the. Maybe that's a different story. I thought I maybe I read the first issue of that. No, that was something else. That was something about a. Uh, I think it was an image title, not only press. So mm -hmm. never mind. I'll cut that out later. Gotcha. <laughs> you little splice. Yeah. yeah no, I it think won't this be. is just what happens when you're a center. Right, <laughs> it's just, yeah. you don't get into heaven. Yeah, there's, yeah. <laughs> it just looks like you know old school mafia type stuff. Yeah, I think that's the, the upshot of it. Yeah, so. I mean it's just like there are like there's a handful of people here buying it. Seem to be really liking it. Nobody's mm -hmm. dropped off of it. You know, is I mean? that Colin Bunn? Yeah. So and he really writes solid horror stuff. Yeah. You know, he writes too much stuff. He's, oh. he's on too many books. Yeah. <laughs> Make you uncomfortable. Well, it's just he's <laughs> he's he. he some of this other stuff that he's done, like some of the sci-fi stuff, like he, he was on, was it Micronauts or ROM or both? Mm -hmm. And they just were not great because he was gotcha. writing like 10, 15 titles yeah, a month. Spread, spreading himself spreading too way thin. too thin, yeah. Gotcha. So. Uh, on 402, we've got a, uh, looks like a reoffering of the Stranko's History of Comics Volume 2. Uh, I would assume one is available too but it's not listed here but those are just some nice sort of history of comics books mm -hmm. that stranko did back in the day uh, i know our, our local university here has this in their library that i've read years ago <laughs> over right. there in between mm -hmm. classes uh, hmm. uh, on 425 in tokyo pop we've got a wall-e manga uh, again, I don't really keep up with this, but if you're a Disney fan, this looks like maybe sort of a neat take on that. And it looks like they've got some others in here, too, of Beauty and the Beast and Stitch and things like that. So if you want, like, manga versions of some of the classic Disney characters, those are available. <laughs> uh, I think that's the last I have for the actual comic books. Comics, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm good. On 460 in the book book section, we've got the uh, famous monster movie art of Basil Gogos. Mm, yeah. Looks like we have a couple volumes of that. Or no, it's a soft cover and hard cover with different covers. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's a really good artist that just passed away not too long ago. Uh, did my one of my favorite album covers of Rob Zombie's Hellbilly Deluxe. So just a lot of old famous monsters of Filmland kind of <laughs> art there. Yeah, very cool. I always liked his stuff because it was a weird mix of um, gothic monster kind of stuff mixed with like '60s psychedelia. You know, yeah, so just like, really kind of bright colored, yeah, very fun stuff. very cool stuff. Unexpected, but it really works. It yeah, really and good. him or who else? At least Raina's account followed me on Twitter. Oh yeah, so there's that. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Four sixty one. They've got an art of pinup hardcover. Price is a little crazy. $200. Whoa! <laughs> but some of that pinup stuff by Alberto Vargas and stuff's really cool. Yeah. I know my dad's big into that stuff. So. Right. But yeah, the price is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Two hundred bucks. I ordered it for him and I saw it and I was like, oh. uh, No, you better get a heck of a discount, yeah. huh? Yeah. Uh, in the trading card section, we have. Uh, Star Wars black and white. Why do black and white cards for Star Wars? <laughs> it was a color movie when it came out, kids. Right, We're not that yeah. old. It's not throwback. It's not like you know, because it's out Star of limits Wars. or something. And All because right. there's somebody out there who has to have everything. Oh, yeah, yeah they'll get it. But <laughs> I don't know. It's got like little signatures or something on it, too. Yeah. Those are chase cards. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. chase cards. There's like one for like, if you're lucky, one a box. Usually it's probably like one a case. So... Yeah, it's that's for the best thing, that you don't know anything about yeah. the cards. Yeah, but if that is your thing, then talk to Mike yeah, at Campus Comics, and he can order them for you. Yes, we will not stock them. But yes, we can order them. You can be ordered. So, yeah, just because we get snarky about things doesn't mean we won't get them for oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> We're good with that. Yeah, the forty forty two. Yeah. Can I go to forty two? On 479, in the graffiti section, looks like we have a Wonder Woman shirt by Darwin Cook. And I think oh, this yeah. was the cover to one of the Golden Age omnibuses that they did. So that's kind of a right. n- nice shirt. Again, not in my size, so whatevs. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a big and tall. Yeah, they know. <laughs> Page uh, 42, you have several uh, DC hoodies. By the time you would get these, it'd be past the peak season, season for yeah. them. Yeah, but uh, they've got Batman... Uh, Flash, Superman, Wonder Woman um, hoodies, so they're you know pretty cool looking. There is a Black Panther beanie though that you could maybe get in time for the movie. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Got that Bob's Burger one too. I know there's a big pe- bunch of people that's big into that. Mm-hmm. Page uh, page forty seven. They got that Wonder Woman PBC, and while that was a cool scene in the yeah. movie, it does not translate <laughs> no. well to a statue. Yeah, without the context, if you yeah. don't know what that is, why yeah, is she is in that weird. pose? Yeah, yeah. The, the legs look weird. It's yeah. almost like she slipped on the floor. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. add ons. Uh, <laughs> right after that, on forty eight, we've got the DC Gallery Supergirl PBC diorama. This is sort of a nice, uh, affordable statue. Of the uh, Melissa Benoist, Benoist, Benoist? sure. It's not Benoit, is right. all I know. Yeah. And uh, this is a nice likeness of her. There hasn't been a lot of merchandise I've seen for the show, but I don't feel like any of the likenesses have been that great. But I think this one looks pretty good mm-hmm. on this. And again, another affordable statue, like yeah. Mike was talking about earlier. Page four ninety continues the Diamonds excellent line. If you're a fan of the Batman animated series, they have a really nice set of busts. Come out usually come out about sixty bucks. That's the way this one is too. This is Clayface in this one. They're a good size. They're really high quality paint applications. They're always really good on these. And everyone I've seen, I've really been impressed with. It's really nice. But so if you're into that, you know they still they carry quite a bit of back stock on those too because it is Diamond's product line. So yeah. they make sure to stock those. And I'm usually into good size busts too. So. Yeah. But a bunch. Page uh, five hundred four. 503. Three, How about ahead. that? We've got the Frazetta Tribute Death Dealer statue, which is uh, Frazetta's oh. sort of classic rendition yeah. of the Death Dealer at Frank Frazetta's <laughs> grave. Wow. Great. That is cool. That's, yeah. I showed that to my dad. I was like, dude, check this out. And he was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if it's $270 cool, yeah. but it's cool. It's kind of an interesting concept, though. Yeah. 
504, we've got, I didn't, this is apparently a resolicit, but if you are a fan of Friday the 13th, they have Friday the 13th action figures along with the Camp Crystal Lake accessory, accessory pack, pack, which includes a giant stone that you can use to weight your uh, Jason down so he stays <laughs> at the bottom of Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> That's for those kids that like to play with their toys in the bathtub. There you go. <laughs> so it's <laughs> it's kind of unclear here, in the, but it looks like in the picture, is there like sort of a clear stand that he connects to? Because yeah. it looks like oh, he is yeah, sort of I see like that rising on his right foot. It's oh, got like uh, a little, yeah, okay. Yeah. So you can actually kind of simulate him floating there in the water. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I, I think oh. I'm just about done. Yeah, I don't uh, think I've got much either. On yeah. 509, I can't remember if we've talked about this before, if I just saw it online, but they're doing a Ninja Turtles Casey Jones mask. Which I thought oh, was kind of no. cool. Uh, it's just sort of, you know, oh, a yeah. prop replica. Well, usually yeah. those things are crazy priced. This yeah, this is yeah, it's a it is resolicited. Okay, so, gotcha. but that's fine. But yeah, but again, that's kind of cool. You don't have to get a generic wow. hockey mask. You can get his. Mm -hmm. uh, on five fifteen, we've got some of the Funko stuff. The There's the uh, Booster Gold and Scott's Blue Beetle favorite. two pack. <laughs> we've got a regular metallic versions of them, mm -hmm. and then we've got a Lobo that I think was solicited already too. Yeah, yeah. both yeah. these are. As a matter of fact, I'm getting the Blue Beetle and Booster Gold two packs mm -hmm. coming next week. Are they? Yeah. So, so a lot of times they're in the yeah, like everything on five fifteen has been previously solicited. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like on five sixteen and five seventeen. Yeah, Diamond, unfortunately, you know, we do carry those and have some in the store. If you're into Pops, come check them out. But, um, you know, usually, for some reason, Diamond, our distributor, is a little bit behind the curve on those. So, like, a lot of times, by the time they're available to us, they've been, like, in other retail outlets yeah. for a while. But, but it's always worth the wait. It is. Yeah. They're always the better ones come here. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, and I'm not sure. I can't remember if we've talked about this before or not, but they've got the Masters of the Universe, you know, He-Man ones in here. You're right. I know those early ones they did sold out, and they go for big dollars now. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get an affordable He-Man pop, this is where you go. We've got, you know, He-Man and Skeletor battle armor. <laughs> we've got Stratos, Orko, Merman, Evil Lynn, and Beast Man. So mm -hmm. if you're into that, there's probably one at least you want. Well, there's Out your of James that Bond moment. pops, too, right next yeah, to Yeah, and those look kind of cool. Uh, the Jill Masterson one's kind of weird because yeah. she's painted gold, gold which is how she was killed apparently. in the movie. <laughs> that's her a, eyes are closed. Yeah, that's, that's a dead pop. Up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> They're selling you. That chick is dead. <laughs> so, you know, the others are kind of neat, but yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah, that's weird. But you got Odd Job there. He's pretty awesome. And, uh, yeah. Ernst Stavro Blofeld. Yeah. yeah. This cat, we got Jaws. Yeah. And we got... Connery and more bonds. Huh. Uh, oh, cool. On 529, we've got the Thor Ragnarok Hulk life size figure oh, for the low, cheap. low price of $11,800. Oh, <laughs> Mike, do you take cash? I do. I <laughs> okay, just checking. Yes. Yeah. I'm well, probably going to have two of those in the store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you kind of have to get... They also have a Thor from Ragnarok, right. and these are both in their gladiator outfits from where they fight in the movie. So you have to get the sets. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, it's only $8,500 yeah, more. Dollars. I mean, it's by comparison, so, it's a bargain. Yeah. What kind of discount would there be on that, Mike? Uh, <laughs> you, could knock, you could knock at least $50 uh, off, at couldn't you? Right. Okay, yeah, at least 50 off of that one. That's my cost. It'd be about $100 off yeah. <laughs> So we'll split that with you. Oh. Uh, on 560, we've got some uh, Predator 2 figures. Oh, which, uh, yeah. <laughs> which Actually, Predator 2 wasn't a bad movie. I, so, I yeah. liked it. I really uh, it's definitely not the best Predator movie. Uh, well, it's not the best, <laughs> no, not the but best. it's not the worst either. I think it might be. No, no, no. Well, I didn't uh, see the second AVP, I guess. Well, so you know what? I Actually, that. I take that back. What I'm thinking of, I'm, well, I've predator 2 but the uh the comic was actually was the original screen they did a four issue mini series oh, of yeah. predator back in the late 80s mm -hmm. and that was actually going to be the original screenplay and then it didn't make it so they put it oh, in okay. a comic the comic is pretty good oh, okay. maybe that's what i'm thinking we're getting reversed well i don't hate that second showed in all this catalog or the last catalog i want to say something mm -hmm. like that maybe Oh, so the Predator thing? Predator, I yeah. Been wrong, it would, like it would have been in Dark Horse. Yeah, if I think it, it, there was something Predator related in the Dark Horse like, last month. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing about these, though, it says it's 1 18th scale. How big that's, is that? That's 
Well, you got to say one eighteenth, so a seventy-two a inch figure would be like four inches tall. Yeah, so these are pretty small. Yeah. Though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because they look really detailed. It looks uh, like a lot of articulation, but I'm like eighteenth. That can't be that big. Yeah. And they're only twenty dollars too. Yeah. So I figured for sure, if it's like a seven-inch figure, it's definitely gonna be at least thirty. Yeah. Right. You know, for something like that. So yeah, that's I could figure that out right. as far as the scale. Yeah. So a six-foot-tall person that would be four inches tall in that okay. scale. On 578. Who says our American education system? <laughs> That's right. We've got the Ninja Turtles Leonardo inflatable adult costume. Yes, inflatable. Just in time for Valentine's Day, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, if you, if you want to get a puffy looking Leonardo costume, <laughs> we can hook you up. Yes. For some reason. Uh, I think that's all I've got in the catalog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm good I'm too. Good, good. Tyler, oh. you gonna close us out with your brilliant commentary? <laughs> 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 Put him I'm on the spot. Uh, take that's us out, good. Mike. All right. Well, I guess that'll do it for this episode of the Campus Comics Cast. Um, thanks for tuning in with us. If you want to come by and see us, and please do come by and see us at the shop or at 816B East Main Street right next to Mike's Music just a couple doors down from Plaza Records a couple of great neighbors if you hear music in the background that's Mike having a late night recording session or something over there um, phone number is 618-457-8100 oh man that was my old work number what is that 618-457-6011 <laughs> man flashback but anyway um, hours are uh Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 6. Um, come in. Super easy to start a pull list. You know, we need to talk about that a little bit more. You know, just come in. Give us a list of titles you want every month. You know, minimum three titles. Take a small deposit. And uh, we'll start pulling as soon as we can. And that, uh, avoid missing those titles. Missing sellouts. Um, Facebook. Just message me through Facebook. Check us out Facebook page. Give us a like. And uh, that's about all I got. All right, uh, Scott Reed, you can find me at www.bergcomics.com, B-U-R-G. Um, also check out my eBay store, stores.ebay.com slash bergcomics, and find me on Facebook. Yeah, this is Dan Brown. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, WordPress, and my old DeviantArt page. I keep forgetting to update <laughs> at Detective651, and that's the numerals. Uh, I've been kind of busy with other stuff lately, but I'm going to be putting some more stuff on those soon. And I'm Tyler Wright, and you can find me on Facebook. Yeah, or just come in and talk to him. He's usually here Saturdays too. Yeah, just come say hi. <laughs> yeah, just come say hi. Pretty much the local like comic book store fly that just hangs around. Yeah. <laughs> he's the Brian Johnson of Campus Comics. Yeah, he's talking, always here, always welcome. By the way. Well, I guess that'll do it. So see you next time. Bye.